Kristen Weider, and I'm a member of the American Osteopathic College of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation's Resident Council. These videos are a compilation of various osteopathic treatment techniques used to treat common musculoskeletal dysfunction. We hope you find these videos helpful and informative. Hi everybody, I'm Kirsten Weider. I'm a resident physician. And I'm Rohan Benita. I'm a medical student. Today we're going to be talking about osteopathic um, treatments for sacral dysfunction. So a uh, very common finding in clinic um, can cause a lot of discomfort for patients and can be a very confusing topic both to teach as well as to use in treatment. So hoping to clear some things up here today and um, teach these techniques in a succinct way. Yeah, exactly. We're going to be talking about how to treat anterior and posterior sacral torsions. We're going to be using the muscle energy technique to treat those and we'll also finish off by talking about unilateral extension and flexion dysfunctions of the sacrum and for that we're going to use myofascial release technique. So I hope you guys enjoy. Indications for the following techniques include somatic dysfunction, back pain, especially lumbar, hip pain, difficulty walking or an abnormal gait, and knee and ankle pain. And contraindications for this technique include patient refusal, no somatic dysfunction, recent trauma or falls, fractures or dislocations, recent surgery, undiagnosed joint swelling, an abscess or a local infection, or an open wound. In order to find the site of dysfunction, we'll complete a seated flexion test. So first, locate your patient's uh, PSIS and place your thumbs just inferior to that posterior superior iliac spine. As the patient leans forward, first off making sure both feet are on the floor. In an ideal situation, uh, palpation would take place on the patient's bare skin at, at that PSIS. Uh, as the patient flexes forward, you will monitor with your thumbs along the PSIS. Um, here you can notice that my left thumb, you can maybe notice that my left thumb is superior to the right. You can come back up, Rohan. So the uh, thumb that travels further, superior, will be the side of the dysfunction, and that positive dysfunction will be opposite the um, axis of diagnosis. In order to palpate the sacral base and inferior lateral angle of the sacrum, um, I like to start with the lumbar spine using the palm, uh, the heel of your palm here. Palpate down towards the lumbar spine until you find the sacrum. Once you find the sacrum, you fall lateral to find the uh, sacral base on the left and right side. From there, continue to palpate inferior until you find the lateral border of the sacrum, that little drop off, and then find the inferior lateral angle and your thumbs will fall just below that angle of the bone. So, sacral base, ILA. So, for the sacral base on both sides, um, with your thumb on that sacral base, you're palpating to feel if one base is more posterior than the other. That means that your thumb will feel closer to you than the other. For example, here on Rohan, the right uh, sacral base feels more posterior than the left. As we drop down towards the ILA, uh, when your thumb is actually on the ILA, again, we're monitoring if one side feels more posterior than the other. Again, that right side feels more posterior. As well, with the ILA, you can drop beneath that bone and actually press up to feel if one ILA is more inferior than the other. Here, that right ILA also feels more inferior than the left. So, let's say that this headrest is the sacrum. Uh, here we have the sacral base on the right, sacral base on the left, ILA on the left, ILA on the right. If we were to notice that the sacrum was twisted as so, uh, the sacral base on the right and the ILA on the right would be more posterior. 
If you notice that the sacral base and ILA are posterior on the same side, then you know that you're working with either an anterior or posterior torsion. For unilateral dysfunctions, you would notice the sacrum uh, on palpation, something like this. The sacral base would be anterior on the right, posterior on the left. The ILA would be anterior on the left, posterior on the right. Here you want to pay attention to the side of the positive seated flexion test. Say the seated flexion test was positive on the right. Since the sacral base is anterior on the right, that would make this a flexion unilateral dysfunction. However, say the seated flexion test was positive on the left, the sacral base is posterior on the left. That would make this an extension unilateral dysfunction. The final part of diagnostics for the sacrum is the sphinx test. So in the sphinx test, again, you'll um, find the patient's sacral base and monitor with your thumbs. You'll have the patient prop themselves up on their elbows in order to create back extension. With that back extension, you'll monitor on the sacral base. If you notice that the um, discrepancy between your thumbs is accentuated or your thumbs become more asymmetrical on the sacral bases, that means that you have a posterior torsion. However, if you notice with back extension, when your patient comes up into that sphinx pose, um, your thumbs are more symmetrical or there's a less, less of a discrepancy between your thumbs being posterior versus anterior, uh, that means that you have an anterior torsion. So more asymmetrical would be a posterior torsion, more symmetrical would be an anterior torsion. So let's talk about uh, nomenclature with diagnosis. So the first letter of your diagnosis will come from the rotation of the sacrum. Let's say the sacrum is rotated to the right, that'll give you that first R. The second letter comes from the axis of rotation. So if the seated flexion test was positive on the left, that will mean that we're working with a right axis. That means the diagnosis will be a right on right anterior sacral torsion. And now let's say, for example, that the sacrum is rotated left. That will give us that first letter of the diagnosis, a L for left. The second letter, again, comes from the uh, axis. Let's say the C inflection test is still positive on the left, giving us a right axis. So our diagnosis would be a left on right posterior sacral torsion.